What's up guys, Justin Seeley here. Today we're gonna to be working in Adobe Illustrator showing you how to create this cool little layered icon effect using gradients and transparency. So let's go ahead and get started here. I've got a blank artboard already ready to go. And what I've done is created a document here that's 1000 by 1000 pixels. So just go ahead and create yourself a document, 1000 by 1000. And then what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna start off with the rectangle tool. And the rectangle tool, we're going to go to the top left-hand corner of the artboard, click, and we're going to create a rectangle that's 1,000 by 1,000, and hit OK. Now, this automatically used the gradient that I was working with before. I don't need that, so I'm going to change the fill color over here by double-clicking, and we're going to use a hex code value down here of 2-2-2-2-2-2, so six twos, and hit OK. And... In this case, it did something weird with the gradient stop. If that happens to you, you can come over here and just switch to a solid color and it should fix that issue for you. And then what we're gonna do is lock this particular object. So we're gonna use Command on the Mac, Control on the PC, and press the number two on your keyboard. And that's gonna lock it down. Now we're ready to start adding our shapes. So I'm going to switch to a color here. Just any color will do, I'll switch to blue and make sure I'm still working with the rectangle tool and come to the very center and then once I have that done we're going to hold on the option key on Mac alt key on PC click in the middle and we'll create something here that is 350 pixels wide by 350 pixels tall hit OK and there's my shape now I want to create this like it's uh, layers like sheets of paper right now before I use circles but as you can see you can use any shape you want. You can use diamonds, circles, hexagons, doesn't matter. So in this case we want this to look like sheets of paper almost layered on top of each other so what we're gonna do is just rotate this. So I'll go to the corner, hold down shift and rotate it one time around so that it looks like a diamond. And then I kinda wanna flatten it out like it's out in space kinda just sitting there. So what I'm going to do here is right click on the shape, go down to transform and select scale. And when I do that what I want to do is make sure non-uniform is selected, change the scale to 65%, and then hit OK. That's going to give me my new shape, this kind of diamond shape where it looks like it's a piece of paper kind of flattened out. But you notice the bounding box is not exactly following the contour of the shape. We're going to reset that just to make it easier for us to scale it and move it around. So we'll go up to Object, Transform, Reset Bounding Box, it's going to automatically fix that for me. And then I'm going to move this up to the top a little bit. Something like that. Now we need to create a couple of copies of this, right? So let's go up to the object menu. And let's go down to transform. Transform each. And I want to move this approximately 100 pixels vertically. So it's going to move it down 100 pixels. And that's all I'm going to change in here. And I'm going to hit copy instead of OK. That's going to create a copy of it. So copy, there we go. And now let's create a couple more. So we've got one, two, three, four. So I'm just pressing Command or Control D on my keyboard to repeat that transformation. Now that I have all my shapes, and if I select them, you can see they're all individual shapes, I'm going to group them together quickly. So Command or Control G and then I'm just going to use my align panel, which by the way, I have a custom workspace created here where I have the align panel docked right here, making it easier for me to get to. You can go to the window menu and choose align and it will bring it up. So I'm going to just center these up really quickly. And then we're going to ungroup them by going to object, ungroup. And now I'm ready to start adding in my colors. In my swatches panel, I've actually created a series of swatches that we're going to use for this. Now, if you want to create these swatches, let me go through the numbers for you. So the first one here is an RGB value of 6, 243, and 226. The second color is 0, 187, 189. The third is 106, 91, 244. The fourth is 9, 219, 245. The fifth is 54, 58, 140. And the final swatch is 0, 143, 244. 
So those are all the swatches we're going to be using for these shapes. I'll select the top shape here. And what I'm going to do is add a gradient to this. So I'll just go over to my tools panel and right in the middle there, you can add a gradient swatch. So I'll do that. And you notice when I do that, it's in the very back. Well, that's not what I want. That's the top layer. So it needs to be in front. So we'll just right click, choose a range, bring to front. Then I'm going to temporarily undock my gradient panel just to make it easier to get to. If you don't have the gradient panel on screen, go to window and select gradient to bring it up, or you can press command F9 on the Mac, control F9 on the PC. And then from my swatches panel, what I'm going to do is just use these swatches I've created. So for this one, I'll take this light blue, drag it down to the right stop, the darker blue, drag it down to the dark stop over there. And if you want to change the gradient, you can grab the gradient tool with the letter G on your keyboard, and then you can make adjustments to the gradient. So I want it to be a little darker on that side, so I just move that stop in a little bit. There we go. And then now, switch to the Move tool with the letter V. Select the next shape down. And I'm just going to start with this gradient. It's easier just to click right here on the gradient. It's going to automatically bring that up. And then it's behind the shape underneath it. So I'm going to bring it forward by holding down Command on the Mac, Control on the PC, and then pressing the right bracket key on my keyboard. And I'll do that twice. That moves it to where it needs to go. And then we'll use our swatches again. So I'll drag this purple color to the right stop and this really light blue to the left stop. Move down. Same thing here. I'm just going to adjust the gradient. So I'll click here. And then we'll do dark on the right, light on the left, something like that. And for the last one here, I need to move it underneath. So let's right click, arrange, send to back. And if it goes all the way to the back, just use command and the right bracket key to bring it back. And so now this bottom one, I'm going to give it the same color as the one on top of it, but we're going to make some changes with this that's going to make it a little easier for us to work with. So the top one here, we're going to leave that at 100% opacity. The second one, let's open up the opacity section in the properties panel and just dial that back to something like 75%. The next one down, we'll dial that down to about 50%. And then on the bottom, we'll dial that down to about 25%, something like that. And there we go. There is our layered composition. And as you can see, they are all still just editable vector shapes. No big deal, but you get this really cool 3D-like effect. And again, you can do that with just about any shape you want. All you have to do is pick your gradient colors and then adjust the opacity. This is a really popular effect. You see it a lot in logos today and a lot of icons for apps. So I thought that you might enjoy it as well. So hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a few things. If you did, be sure to like this video and also subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you again next time.